1990, this really started. Um, Jeff Sutherland, who's a good friend of mine, is also in the Boston area. And we both were looking at the state of the art for building software because we're trying to build software for use in, by other people. And we're talking and we both had come up with a very similar approach. And, and Jeff had um, come up with his approach based on lean thinking. He really admired Anunnaka and Takahushi and so he had adopted a lot of their ideas and I really liked some ideas that I got from DuPont, their advanced research facility, which were based on advanced process control, complex process control. And when I went down and talked to them, they said, well, yeah, you know, software development is very complex and, and the way you're building it now, how's it going? And I said, well, you know, she's one. Um, only 16% of projects do what they're supposed to, and the rest are in some ways considered waste. Um, people do not like their jobs. They come to work and they moan and groan at that. Um, the canary in the coal mine women are fleeing our industry as fast as they can, finding any other job they can possibly have. Um, things are not going well. And he said, well, you're using the wrong approach. So Jeff and I spent um, four or five years coming up with um, and researching an approach toward building software that would be more flexible, give people more control, and allow the creative process not only to bloom and to, to flow, but to do so in a way there where you could control the risk and maximize the value. Because software is not, uh, I mean, certainly you do it for fun, but it's nice if you can support your family and, and make an industry out of it. So we spent about five years working on, on this and kind of came up with our approach and we presented a, a paper at a conference in um, 1995. And that was the first time we went public. And, and much to our surprise, a lot of other people were taken by the approach. And we not only found out were they taken by the approach, but they were trying stuff like it. Now, if you worked in a big company like General Electric or State Farm or Liberty Mutual or that, you had to build software the old fashioned way where you said, where you viewed your challenge to um, develop all the requirements that the user told you by a certain date for a certain cost. And it was horrible. People underneath the, um, the, the out of sight who were having to do this to make a living for themselves, like Jeff and myself were, we're doing it very differently. And from 1995 to 2001, we all started talking back and forth. We ran experiments. I, I ran an experiment at, at, at Fidelity. Um, back in 1998, if you wanted to manage your Fidelity account, like you could with Charles Schwab or E-Trade, you had to either call them or you could go downtown Boston and use a 3270 green screen type thing and they were losing business. And they couldn't get it up on the internet. The, the, their process was so morbid. So they said, okay, we will hold everyone off and do something. And we did. Within 30 days, we had their first version of, of their website up and they built it and, and it was like a team of uh, two teams of 18 people. It, and it happens over and over again. When you have, um, I was working with what is now GE Medical at the same time, Jeff was also. And if you have an x-ray or an MRI, those things taken of you, you used to have film. You know, they'd put it against this, this transparent thing. Um, if you went to another doctor in another state, they'd have to redo the same thing. And that was kind of crazy. And, and so what they came up with was the idea of tele, teleradiology, that is, why don't we take that image and put it on a hard drive so people, different people can collaborate about it, talk about it, radiologists can work on it, make suggestions and comments, and it's available as part of this. This is like the start of the me electronic medical record. And for two years, you know, we just sat there struggling because the internet didn't have the capacity. Now, if we had had one of the standard projects, they, we'd have been fired and thrown out. Instead, we were making little bits of progress and little bits of progress. And finally, we got enough bandwidth capacity. 
and we went live. Um, we, we, not, GE was the first with it. Um, so these were, were creative experiments. You know, there was no certainty, there was no surety, and there was a lot of risk. So this was a way of um, our approach allowed you to, to maximize your risk to one month's worth of salaries for a bunch of developers. And at the end of the month, you would see what they could do. And so I would talk to them and say, so Fidelity really needs some website that can access down into their data so we can get customer records. And they'd, they'd say, yeah, well, that's going to be tough. I said, so in a month, what can you do? I said, well, and we'd, so we'd talk about it for a day. And then I'd say, OK, so we have like a month to do our best to do this. If you need anything at all, because this is probably the most important thing in Fidelity, let me know. And at the end of the month, we'd see what they had done. And then we would um, say, OK, that's a really good thing. And the rest of Fidelity gathered around and said, but that's not according to the standards. And the business people said, get out of here. <laughs> and he said, instead, why don't, what can you do in the next sprint? They said, well, what's the most important thing that we can add to make this website viable and customer friendly? He said, how about these things? And so they would, this, suddenly we started seeing software developers collaborating with business people to create functionality that created value for the business.